Thank you. Thank you all so very much. Well, listening to the wonderful stories of the other honorees that preceded mine, I was overcome with uh, increasing doubt. I knew that this was too good to be true, and I realized that it really was too good to be true when they started playing Justice Tom Lanovich's tape all over again. <laughs> But fortunately, it has proved true, and I find myself enormously honored and indeed humbled to stand here before you today. I want to begin with brief thanks. Words cannot express what I owe to others. I, of course, want to thank first and foremost the Commission and the American Bar Association for this award but also for everything they are doing to advance the position of women in society and in the law. I want to thank the many mentors who have helped me throughout my career, who believed in me when I did not believe in myself sometimes. I want to thank the people who have taken a chance on me, including a couple of prime ministers from time to time. And I particularly want to thank my family. Uh, my parents have passed on, and, but I want to thank most sincerely the two husbands who have supported me successively, I must say, <laughs> in my uh, career. My first husband, who passed away much too soon, inspired me to become a lawyer when I did not so much as dream that that was a real possibility, and supported me throughout those early difficult years. My second husband, Frank McArdle, is with us here today, and he, as always, is by my side supporting me. I could not have done whatever I, I have done without the support of these people. Well, when I was told that I was going to get this award, I, of course, like others, read a little bit about Margaret Brent. And she is indeed a formidable person the first woman attorney of America in 1638 or thereabouts. This extraordinary woman was so successful that she won the ultimate accolade of the society of her time, the ultimate honor it could bestow upon her, a masculine title. She was addressed, I read, as Gentleman Margaret Brent. <laughs> I'm glad that we live in a time when women can be addressed by titles suitable to their own gender. Well, the story of Margaret Brent is inspiring, and yet I found it a little discouraging. It was inspiring to me because it told me, it shows, that women can succeed, women can do anything they want, women can work for their society in any way they want. But it was a little discouraging to realize that it took a couple of centuries for other women to follow in those footsteps. Margaret Brent died in 1671. It took another 200 years for American women to become admitted to state bars and to begin practicing law. And north of the border, things were even slower. Our first female lawyer was called to the bar here in Toronto in 1897, Claire Brett Martin. Well, as you've heard, I was born in, in 1943 and grew up near a small town in southern Alberta. I, was once, I once introduced the wise and charismatic Sandra Day O'Connor at a luncheon speech here in Canada, where she had been so kind as to graciously accept a speaking invitation. 
Justice O'Connor stood up after the introduction and said, I'm so happy to be here in Canada with the Chief Justice because we both grew up on ranches. And I was, I thought that was a very uh, interesting uh, and, and true anecdote. But when I was thanking her in conclusion, I felt obliged in the interests of honesty to point out that her ranch spanned two states and was infinitely bigger than the uh, rather smallish ranch on which I started out. Well, Sandra Day O'Connor broke trail before me, and my generation owes her an enormous debt. And there was a lot of very hard parched, century-packed trail to be broken. The expectation, as I was growing up, was that women would fulfill their lives and their destiny on the domestic scene. Most would marry and remain within a home, and those who didn't uh, were often condemned to live their days out as spinster aunts. There might be a little teaching, perhaps some nursing or secretarial work, but women's options were few, their choices virtually nil. But then things slowly began to change. A new idea, one that could not be stopped, began to take hold. Like great, all great ideas, it was a simple idea. It was the idea, the conviction, if I may say so, that women like men should be able to choose what they do with their lives. My choice was the law. There were only a few women in our law class. And people often ask, what was it like in the late 60s, early 70s for women seeking to practice law? Well, the answer is not entirely easy. Law school wasn't so difficult, but making, finding a place in the practice of law required a bit more effort. I went for my first interview for articles with a very good firm. And the senior lawyer and I had a great time. I thought the interview had gone swimmingly until the very end when he looked at me and he said, why do you want to work? Well, I didn't know what to say. I was completely dumbfounded. I had spent seven years of my life getting to this point, and he was asking me why I wanted to work. He must have sensed my consternation because he very kindly explained, well, you are married, aren't you? And then it dawned on me that, in his mind at least, this brilliant, enlightened, leading lawyer, as I saw him, a married woman should not work. Yet women committed to their right to choose, and the choice they had made, the choice to be a lawyer, persisted. Yes, they faced hostility, doubt, and sometimes outright assertions that they were not cut out for the legal profession. They discovered that the best way to deal with these attitudes was not to dwell on them, but to do their work to the best of their ability. Move on, get the job done, something women have always known how to do. In the end, the women who took up the practice of law in the 70s and 80s, like Margaret Brett, Brent, so long before, proved the skeptics wrong. They could do the work. They could handle the difficult clients. They did not crumble under the pressure of complex trials or settlement negotiations. Today, the long list of recipients of the Margaret Brent Award offers living proof that women can choose to do what they want to do and that there is nothing they cannot achieve in the law. Let us not be complacent, however. Statistics in Canada and the United States show that while women have come a long way, there is still a long way to go. If we care about gender equality, it is of utmost importance that we strive in both our countries to increase the number of women in significant positions. I'd like to just briefly close with three reasons why I think it's important. 
First, it's important to give those young women coming up role models, and I think the young men too. Having women in prominent positions in the bar, on the bench, in our corporations sends a message to girls who are trying to imagine what they will do with their life, that they do have a choice, that they can be whatever they want to be, contribute to society in whatever way they wish. That society and the law will no longer, as it once did, stand in their way. Second, helping women succeed and succeed in greater numbers brings diverse perspectives to the practice of law, to the business of judging. Toronto's Globe and Mail recently reported, speaking more generally of women in corporate world, that having different perspectives around the table makes good business sense. Diverse teams support innovation and help companies mirror and serve a diverse marketplace. Well, women are 51% of the population, and that 51% has their special and particular experiences and wisdom, wisdom that they can bring, perspectives that they can bring to the organizations and the institutions that they work with. All of this enriches society, makes the process better. And the third reason we need to really support gender parity in all our institutions is the message of inclusion that is not just a message but goes to the basis of how our institutions function. The presence of women, for example, in a country's highest court, high other institutions, signals to other women and minorities that they're welcome in those institutions. This was brought home to me by an experience I had when I was a trial judge. It was a very slow afternoon, and a domestic divorce case came before me. The couple at bar had already separated, and they had agreed on custody, and all that was at stake was dividing uh, the proceeds of the sale of the family home and assets. The wife's lawyer was a woman. The court reporter was a woman. The court clerk was a woman. And I, the judge, was a woman. The husband was not represented by counsel. And he was the only man in the room. After the wife presented her case, I invited the husband to present his. He started to try to stand up, but he seemed to be having difficulty. I urged him to speak up. He looked at me. Uh, I said, we're here to hear your story. I thought perhaps he was concerned he didn't have a lawyer. I said, it's a simple case. I just need to hear your side of it. And finally, he got to his feet and he said, frankly, your honor, I feel a little outnumbered. <laughs> well, I assured him he had no need for concern and that justice in my court would not depend on gender. But I went home that evening and I thought about the experience. and. I reflected on this. How many women over the centuries had stood like that man if they were allowed to stand at all before galleries composed entirely of men? How many women, how often, had felt outnumbered and not just a little? By increasing the participation of women and indeed all underrepresented segments of our societies in law, business, and politics, we will eventually reach the point where full participation becomes the norm. No one will then feel outnumbered simply on account of her gender, race, religion, or orientation. This must be our ultimate goal. In conclusion, I would like once again to extend my congratulations to my co-recipients and my thanks to the Commission and the American Bar Association for this magnificent honor uh, which you bestow on me today. Je vous remercie encore une fois d'une grande honneur qui m'est fait. Merci beaucoup.